because one mole of any gas at STP takes up 22.4 liters of volume, you can take a lot of shortcuts whenever you're doing gas stoichiometry problems. We've got a balance equation, 2C4H10 plus 13 oxygens yields 8 carbon dioxides and 10 molecules of water. So I've boxed my reactant and my product. If two moles of C4H10 are used in the experiment, it's going to produce eight moles of CO2 gas. That's what the balance equation will tell us. So two moles of A will produce eight moles of B. And because we know that from Avogadro's principle that one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters, you could also say 44.4 liters of A will produce 177.6 liters of B. But when you simplify it, what you're actually going to get is 2 liters produces 8 liters. So that means whenever you look at a balance equation, in terms of gas stoichiometry, the coefficients represent moles, and they also represent liters, and that's the shortcut that you can take. Number 51 is true, and all the stuff that I've been discussing leading up to this moment um, would tell you that the balance equation, our balance in units of moles, and volume because of Avogadro's principle, simply because one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters. So that means that you have these equal ratios. So number 52, if you have two moles of C4H10, how many moles of CO2 would you produce? So I'm going to go ahead and box and call that A, box and call this one B. Hey, it's stoichiometry. You guys remember this. So two moles of C4H10, time sign, draw a line. And because we're already in the mole step, you can just cut and paste. So make sure you review the chapter 12 stoichiometry playlist if this doesn't make sense. This should be reviewed. There's really nothing new here. So you put 8 over 2, and you're going to see that stuff will cancel out. And then how many moles of CO2 are produced? It's going to be 8 moles of CO2. And that was obvious because the balance equation said 2 moles of C4H10 is going to give you 8 moles of CO2, and then the math just proves it. Number 53 if you have two liters of C4H10, how many liters of CO2 would you produce now? So let's go ahead and write down a balance equation. It's the same one that we used in number 52. I'm just gonna copy it down again so it's nice and neat for you. We're gonna go ahead and box C4H10 and CO2. And our work should be shown like this. So 2 liters of C4H10, time sign draw a line. We're going to put 2 liters of C4H10 on the bottom, and then cut and paste the 8 liters. Instead of writing moles, you just write liters. That's really all there is to this trick. So you're going to get 8 liters of CO2 to come out from this equation. So what does that mean? So 8 moles of CO2 are produced, or you could say 8 liters of CO2 are produced. And this is made possible because of Avogadro's principle, which states that one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters of that same gas. Number 56, five grams of solid aluminum reacts with 86.4 grams of hydrochloric acid. Let's work out letters A through I, and letter A is write the chemical equation for this reaction. It's gonna be a single displacement reaction. So Al plus HCl makes AlCl3, and then H2 gets displaced. And then you just wanna figure out what the balance equation is by putting in the coefficients. And again, this is all review, so make sure you watch my chapter 10 playlist to figure out how to balance equations and predict the products. Letter B, how many moles of HCl do you have? So we're gonna start with 86.4 grams of HCl and then simply divide by the molar mass of 36 to get it into moles. So 86.4 divided by 36 will give you 2.4 moles of HCl. You can check that one off. Letter C, how many moles of Al do you have? Start with five grams of Al, time sign, draw a line. And because you want grams to cancel, you're gonna divide by the molar mass which is 27, look on the periodic table, table, it's gonna tell you what the mass is. And we've got 
185 moles of Al. So far, so good. Check letter C off. Let's move on. Letter D, again, is review. So which one is a limiting reagent? We're going to do a cross comparison between our two reactants. So we have 2.4 moles of HCl. And we also have 0.185 moles of Al. Time to draw a line for each one. And we're just going to cut and paste these coefficients here. Okay, so we're going to go 2 over 6 and then 6 over 2. Okay, so 2.4 times 2 divided by 6. Notice how the HCLs would cancel out, and that's what we want. We want to get into moles AL, and this will be 0.8 moles of AL. And over here, we're going to write the word need. So everything under this column tells you what you actually need for this reaction, and it's going to allow you to cross compare. You'll see in just a moment. But again, it's just review. Okay. Likewise, do the same for the bottom. 0.185 times 6 over 2 will get you 0.555 moles of HCl. And at this point, HCl, I'm going to circle with the same color. I'm going to use blue here so you can see it easily. And Al, we're going to use the color purple or violet or indigo, whatever you want to call it. Circle those, connect them with the line. Remember how they're supposed to be diagonal from each other? It's supposed to look that way. And then when you glance at it, you can see that Al is the limiting reagent. You simply don't have enough of it. You only have 0.185, but you need 0.8 moles of Al. Letter E and F, you can answer together. Okay, so let's do E first. So how many moles of your excess reagent, which is HCl, it's given to you, will be left over? So simply go 2.4 minus 0.55, because you have 2.4 moles of HCl, but you're only going to need 0.55 of it. And then when you subtract those numbers, you get 1.85 moles of HCl. So that's how much is left over. And then letter F I'm going to do up here because we're running out of room. Letter F, simply take your moles of HCl, 1.85. And now we're going to change this to grams. So you guys should be proficient with this by now multiply by the molar mass, and we're going to get 67.5 grams of HCl. So that's how much is left over. The few remaining problems, G, H, and I, we're going to do on this clip here. So all we really need is the balance equation from letter A, and this will help us do the rest of the problem. Okay, letter G, what is the max number of moles, H2, gas that can be produced? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and box Al because that was a limiting reagent that we found earlier. So we're going to call it Al compound A and then H2 is compound B. So if I want to find moles of H2, I'm simply going to just cut and paste. This one's super easy. So 0.185 moles of Al times sign draw a line. And we're going from... Um, moles of A to moles of B, which means you just cut and paste. So just put the 3 over the 2. And then our answer is going to be 0 0.2775 moles of H2. Okay, so that's letter G. Letter H, at STP, that's a huge clue. At STP, what volume would this H2 gas occupy? So take the answer that you found earlier, 0 0.2775 moles of H2, time sign, draw a line. And remember Avogadro's principle, one mole of any gas takes up how much space? It's 22.4 liters. So simply multiply 22.4 by 0.2775. We're going to get 6.22 liters of H2. And the last problem, letter I, at 120 kilopascals, 30 degrees Celsius, what volume would this H2 gas occupy? So because the pressure and temperature are no longer standard, you have to use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, PV NERT. Solve for V because they want to know what volume would this H2 gas occupy. Isolate for V. So we've got NRT 
over P, and then this becomes a plug and chug problem for N. This represents the moles, so 0.2775 moles of H2, which you found earlier. R is the gas constant in terms of kilopascals, so 8.314 kPa times L over mole K. And finally, for temperature, the temperature was given as 30 degrees Celsius, but we're going to change that to Kelvin quickly. Change it to 303 by adding 273 to 30. And then divide by the given pressure, which is 120 kilopascals. Let's see how all the units cancel out. And they all cancel except for liters. That's great. That's what we wanted to find. We wanted to find volume. So what should be left over is liters. And I'll go ahead and write it up here since we're running out of room. The answer should be 5.83 liters of H2. So let's give you a summary on gas stoichiometry before you decide to run off. So the coefficients in a balance equation tells you the ratio between reactants and products in both moles and volume. And that's because of Avogadro's principle, which states that one mole of any gas at STP will occupy a volume of 22.4 liters. So this chapter has a little bit of everything in it, so make sure you review the chapter 10 playlist on balancing equations, the chapter 11 stuff on moles, chapter 12 stoichiometry with limiting reagents, and you're good to go. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time on Wind Chemistry.